So what's the point, the benefits of using Dart Frog for a full stack development? Having a common data layer and a unified error management help to reduce the pain of the integration and also the, the bug that come from that, okay? And uh, that would be silly, but also help me to change my point of view about the backends. Dart Frog also give access to front-end developer to the development of the backend. That is cool if uh, you don't have uh, a specific team and you want to do a little project. <laughs> Hi, welcome everybody to full stack development with Flutter using Dart Frog. I'm uh, Marco Facco, a Flutter developer at uh, Mobile and Emerging Devices, uh, that is an area of uh, NTT Data Italy. Uh, you can reach me on social like Twitter, Instagram, uh, and also GitHub uh, using the nickname uh, CAFO17 or CAFO underscore 17. And uh, as the photo, <laughs> I'm a dog lover. Okay, so I would like to start uh, this presentation with a question for you all. And the question is, uh, how many times have you faced a situation like uh, this one while uh, integrating uh, the backend part with uh, your mobile or uh, web application? So uh, today uh, I'm going to try to understand how to reduce the pain of this integration using uh, Dot frog. Dot frog is a very recent framework that is built on top of uh, Shelf and uh, Mason. Shelf is a Dart package that allows to build and manage web server middleware. And Mason is a also recent uh, package that allows to generate code based on uh, templates. That frog provides uh, a very small core APIs that allow to have an easy and fast development of uh, backend and middleware. And uh, it's very cool because uh, it reduces a lot the time, the startup time of a middleware project. And uh, as the name suggests, it is based on the Dart ecosystem. That means uh, you don't have to learn a new language, but uh, you just use Dart again. And uh, that means also that you are able to use the dev tools, the bugger and profiler, and also the auth reload. So inside your backend project, we, you will have the dev tools and also the auth reload that it's very, uh, it's a killer feature inside the Flutter development. And now you have also inside the backend one. You can check the documentation on the website of Dartfrog for further information. Okay, uh, now we can start using Dartfrog. And the first step is uh, installing the Dartfrog CLI using the first command. And uh, after that, we are able to use the Dartfrog commands and create our first project. And the generated project, we have a structure like this one. We can identify here three fundamental parts. The first one is the roots folder. Here uh, we are going to place the endpoints, the roots of our middleware. The test folder, here um, you could place the unit testing, integration testing of the roots. Um, I won't cover this, uh, this part in, uh, in this speech. And uh, the last part is the other stuff, like uh, analyzer rules, linter rule, and uh, the pubspec, pubspec YAML for uh, uh, dependency declaration. Okay, so we have our first project. We can now start the server. And uh, we can do that uh, using the Dart frog dev command. Uh, this command will run the server on the default port, that is the 8081. Uh, if you want to specify a specific port, you could uh, use the dash dash port parameter and uh, insert uh, a port that you prefer. And the output inside our terminal will look uh, like this. Okay, you can see here we have um, the server running on localhost on into the 8080 port, 
and we have the DevTools debugger and profiler and the auto reload enabled. Okay, so let's start using our server. We have only one root for the moment that is the declared inside the index.dart and that defines the um, slash, the base root of our middleware. And if we take a look at the index.dart file, inside we can see there is a method, the on request method, that uh, taking in input a request context and then return a response. This handler doesn't do anything because it just returns a static response. And if we reach this particular route okay, with a request, like in the example, as, a, as expected, uh, the welcome to Flutter Heroes response will come. Okay? And uh, the first time uh, I ran the server and made this request, I was like, uh, why is running? Why is working? Where is the magic? Because I just put a on request method inside a, an index file. And the magic is inside a file, the server dot file. And inside this file, if we open it, we can see there are all the configuration regarding the server and all the subscription of the roots. For now, we have just the slash one and the subscription of the related handler into the roots. And uh, the cool thing is that uh, it's all generated by that frog. And that means you don't have to manage anything about the, the server. Just write the handler. And this is amazing. Okay, so another feature that we have uh, inside that frog is the middleware. Um, to use the middleware, middleware, we have to add another file, the underscore middleware.dart file. And inside this uh, file, we can define another function named middleware. And um, why is very useful this function? Because uh, it allows us to execute code before and after, if we need, of course before and after the handler. So the handler that you can see uh, in, as an input of this uh, method is the handler defined inside the index uh, file. And for example, here we are just uh, adding a request logger. And if we reach again the root, we will have uh, a print, a log inside the terminal that uh, it's saying, okay, this is the timestamp of your request, the duration, the method, and the status code of the response. Okay, this is very useful because uh, the use case to use a middleware is like, uh, uh, I need to check the authorization header, okay, because uh, I've wrapped my route and I need uh, to know if the user, and who is the user, and uh, other stuff. Okay, or after, because you need to add some uh, headers or remove others. And the middleware is useful also for the dependency injection because allow us to um, inject data uh, instance of classes inside the handler. And uh, it's possible using the provider function and adding uh, our instance, okay. Inside the handler, it's possible to retrieve this injected data using the request context. And this is like a provider, if you have uh, ever used it. And using the context dot read, um, dot read method, you are able to retrieve the injected data classes and so on, and use it uh, to end the request. Okay, we have seen the basic API of uh, that frog, and now we can try to handle some request. Okay, we have seen uh, that uh, we can do the dependency injection, and we have seen that uh, we can do it uh, using the request context. And uh, this object is the fundamental part of handling a request because uh, also providing the dependency injection using the provider. Um, it brings with uh, itself uh, all the information about the, the request. So inside the request context, we are able to retrieve uh, the HTTP method of the request 
and change the behavior of our, our route based on that. Uh, in this example, we are just managing the post method and the other um, return uh, method not allowed response. So if we try to reach again the root uh, with the post method request, we have a 200 OK uh, successful response. Instead, with a um, get, for example, request, we will have a 405 method not allowed response, so an error. Inside the request context, we are able also to get the headers to just uh, do some checks to customize the response and so on. And uh, like here, we are just customizing the response, adding the uh, header or the origin header to the body of the response. And it's also possible to retrieve the URI of the request and the query parameters. So here, here again, we are able to customize the, the response, do some uh, logics. And the use case could be adding some filters on a GET request, for example. And again, if we try to reach our um, handler now, our root now, we have, uh, without any name parameter, we have a default message. Instead, with the name parameter, we have a customized response. Okay, and uh, the last but not the least um, thing that we could retrieve from the request context is the body of the request. And uh, based on the content type of the request, we should uh, use different methods because, uh, for example, for a text plane body, we should use the that body method on the request. With uh, an application JSON request, we have a uh, content type request, we have a dot JSON method, and uh, for a form data, the form data method. Okay, we have seen how handling, how to, how handling a request. Now we can try to answer to, to this request, and uh, it's possible using uh, the response class and uh, you can do that uh, without a body, just uh, with the status code. You can uh, answer with uh, plain body and uh, headers, with uh, one of them or both, like in the example. Uh, the response default constructor allows you to specify the status code that by default is 200. The headers, like a string string map, and then uh, the body, that uh, in this case is a string parameter. If we want to answer with a JSON body, okay, with a JSON body, we have to use the factory constructor dot JSON of the response that allow us to specify the body parameter as a string dynamic map, okay? Otherwise, uh, we have to JSON encode the map into a string. And this is the example into our root. Okay. Until now, we have played around the slash, uh, the base root. But uh, what if uh, uh, we have to handle a situation, a structure like this one? So you should imagine the, um, the path of every root like the path of a folder tree. Okay, so starting from the top, we have uh, the slash path. So we have a path folder. And then inside the path folder, we have three nested folder roots. Okay, defined by status, defined by tags, and the path ID. So we have to create inside the path folder other three folders. Okay, and then we have another nested that is the upload image. Okay, that is inside the path ID folder. And again, okay, um, to be identified as roots of our middleware, every folder must have an index.dart file with inside our uh, own request method, because otherwise it wouldn't be um, identified by Dart frog as a root. You may notice that the path ID folder as the name wrapped with uh, square brackets. And that's why uh, the path ID root is a dynamic root. 
because here we have a path parameter. The path ID is a path parameter. And uh, to, to say, hey, that frog, uh, look, uh, the path ID is a dynamic root. This is a path parameter, okay? You have to use the square brackets. And uh, Previously, when I was speaking about the request context, I didn't mention the, the path parameters. Uh, how the handler could retrieve them from, from the request? So it's very easy, simple, because uh, that frog provides directly to the, to the handler of the dynamic routes the path parameter they are uh, dependent of because uh, uh, all the subtree of a dynamic route depends on that path parameter. And if we take a look at the index file of the path ID folder, okay, we can see that uh, it takes uh, in input the request context as always and uh, a new parameter that is the path ID and it is exactly the path ID that we have uh, defined uh, on the folder. And we can use it to serve the, the request, to handle, to do some query, okay? And also the, all the subtree inside the dynamic route has the path ID for, um, in parameter as an input of the handlers. And uh, what about the server file? Because uh, now we add uh, more complexity. And if we take a look again, our server file has changed a lot. You can see the main and create uh, server method are the same, doesn't change. And the method build root handler has registered a lot of more uh, routes, all the routes we have defined before. And you can notice, uh, for example, for the dynamic root of the path ID, that uh, the handler takes in input the path ID. And uh, again, uh, I split the image because it was very long. And again, it's all generated by, by Dart Frog for us when uh, you use the Dart Frog dev uh, command. Okay. And now I would like to show you a little demo, a little demo project that uh, gave the idea of this speech. It's a mobile application that uh, me and my colleagues inside my area uh, use to manage and track the devices of the area and also to track their usage. Uh, it is a mobile application that uh, used the um, backend made in JavaScript and uh, I took the, the decision to do an experiment and uh, replace that, uh, uh, that backend made in JavaScript with a Dart Frog backend. And uh, let me move. Okay, and the result is uh, the backend has this structure. Okay, we have uh, an authentication route, the slash login some routes to manage the admins because the application has uh, uh, two roles for the user, normal user and admins. Admins could uh, do more um, operation like uh, adding a new device or uh, delete and edit the other. Okay, and then the, the core of the backend, the devices routes. Okay, um, I would like to show you a little demo Okay, to just look at the logs of the mobile part and the Dart Frog part. And uh, here I can try to make a login. I hope the internet uh, network is uh, fast because uh, previously it wasn't. Okay. Okay. Yeah, the, the authentication is fake for this demo, so every string uh, will, uh, will work. Okay, if we... If we look at the Dart Frog console, okay, you can see here um, post request to the slash login route uh, has made, okay. It does some, um, some lookup at um, MongoDB database to define if the user is uh, an admin or not. And then uh, it takes uh, uh, the slash devices get request to retrieve the list of all the devices. 
Okay, and if we take a look at the log of the mobile application, we can see here that the body of the response, uh, the body of the response of the login has this structure, okay. Inside we have the, all the information about the user and his Jibuti token, okay, and then the list of devices. I would like to show you how uh, I manage the JVT stuff, like the generation, the validation, because uh, it, it's very interesting and it's uh, quite easy because uh, there is a, a package that allows to generate the, the JVT, the Dart uh, JSON Web Token uh, package, uh, allow to specify a payload and then uh, generate the token, okay? and then to validate it. And uh, in fact, every root, as I said before, when I spoke about the, um, the middleware, every root has a middleware, except the login one, that uh, check the authorization header. Okay, check the authorization header and uh, validate the, the JWT token. And uh, if it's not authenticated, it's not valid, or it's missing, uh, an unauthorized 401 uh, response will be sent. Instead, uh, the handler continue to, the, to handle the request, okay? And for this particular route, the slash devices, there is another check on the uh, HTTP method of the, of the request, because the pass method that is the one that request a creation for a new device uh, is wrapped to do a check, an, uh, another check, uh, if the user is an admin or not. If uh, it's not an admin, the forbidden response will be sent to the user. And then the handler keeps working and then do the request. Um, for this project, I made an integration that is with the MongoDB uh, board, okay? There is a MongoDB instance that uh, uh, is used to persist all the data about the devices and all the data about the, the, the admins, and the, not the user. And it's just, uh, I, I have used um, another package that is uh, MongoDart that allow me to interface with the MongoDB uh, cluster and make some requests, open the connection, make some requests, filter, add, deleting, and other stuff. I would like to, to conclude the, the showcase. I would like to bring you, uh, okay, to this package, uh, I'm sorry, I forgot one thing. This is a mono repository. Okay, inside this repository, there is the Dartfrog project and the mobile application project. Okay, all the packages that are listed here are uh, packages that are used uh, by or only by the backend or only by the front end. Okay, there is a particular package that is shared. Okay, and this uh, this package is the entity device models. This package contains all the models that are used inside the, the domain. And uh, what's the point to have a shared models, to have shared models? Uh, previously, I spoke about the pain of the integration of the backend with the front end. Okay, and uh, a lot of error come from the um, not correct the serialization of the object. Okay, and uh, Using a common data layer allow us to reduce all these uh, errors because uh, when a change is made on, for example, this device DTR uh, data transfer object uh, file, the, the change is propagated to the backend part and also to the front end part. And the same is uh, for the enum, enums and uh, and also it is useful to define a list of error and have a defined uh, and know um, when uh, and knows 
um, specifically uh, the errors that could be sent from the middleware to the, to the front end because sometimes we don't know how to handle a specific error and then uh, a generic error is shown to the, to the user and the user experience may be, um, will be of less quality. Okay. Okay, back uh, to the slide. So what's the point, the benefits of using Dartfrog for a full stack development? As I said before, having a common data layer and a unified error management help to reduce the pain of the integration and also the, the bug that comes from that. Okay, and uh, that would be silly, but also help me to change my point of view about the backends. And uh, Dartfrog also give access to, to front-end developer to the development of the backend that is uh, cool if uh, you don't have uh, a specific team and you want to do a little project, okay? And uh, there is any Java backend developer in the room? Ah, for you, okay. <laughs> In uh, this uh, project, this is a little project with a little domain, okay? So uh, I, don't, I didn't find um, such a limitation, okay? But uh, there would be, maybe, because uh, I imagine there are a lot of protocols, there are a lot of type uh, of database. Now I, I have used MongoDB, but uh, I know that there are others like uh, SQL, uh, Postgres. Okay, and uh, I don't know if uh, um, the integration of this, uh, um, of this database are possible or if uh, it's missing the plugin uh, and other. And also I, um, it's possible that uh, uh, a lot of enterprise tool used uh, daily inside the backend development um, is not yet compatible or ready to, um, to be used inside that frog, okay? And uh, what's next about Dartfrog? Uh, recently, mm, the WebSocket support uh, were released. I had enough time to, to test it, but I know that uh, in the last release, uh, there is the WebSocket support. And also, the Dart Client Package Generator and the API Documentation Generator are in, inside the... Um, the roadmap, you can check the roadmap uh, into the, um, the official website of Dartfrog. And uh, now that you know how to, as a front-end developer, okay, you know how to build also the backend part, uh, remember that uh, we are fucked. Uh, just one more thing, sorry. Uh, if you want, there is the QR code. The project is available on uh, my GitHub. So if you want, uh, scan, scan that. Thank you so much.